Chilling Data Studio. I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm going to tell you about my coding journey. Now I create almost all of my visualizations, well actually all of the visualizations that I share on Chilling Data Studio, I create those with a programming language called R, which was built to support statistical programming and has been extended extensively. It is open source, so it's free to use, and there's a great tool called R Studio that you can use as a development environment. And I just really love R. I love it that I can manipulate my data in it, I can analyze my data in it, and then I can create my visualizations and I can really customize them with a package called ggplot2. So I have some videos where I show my coding in R, and today I wanted to talk about where I started and kind of where I went along the way. So I started coding um, when I was a kid, I grew up with two parents who were computer engineers. So there was always computers and computer equipment around. And I think back in 1999 or maybe 2000, but probably 1999, um, we got our first computer for me and my sister and I, me and my sister and I, for my sister and I to use. So we got a, an E-Machines E1. It was blue. And the reason that I'm pretty sure it was in 1999 is that there was an issue with e-machines and apple because the e-machines made the e1 look like the kind of all-in-one apple colorful desktops and they got sued by apple and then they had to stop making it and i think that happened in 2000 so we probably got the computer in 1999 around the time that it was released anyway i really liked that this computer it was in our living room it was really pretty and colorful and also we got to watch videos on it and go online and i remember watching britney spears videos and dancing in the living room getting back to coding i really enjoyed going on neopets and playing on neopets when i was a kid and we had this computer and i wanted to make custom guilds and the way to make custom guilds was to learn some HTML and then you could customize the way the guilds looked. So with HTML and with paint, I made my own custom guilds and that's how I started coding. And I didn't do much coding after that. Um, I might have done some more, you know, playing with my guilds along the way, but um, I didn't do any computer science classes in middle school or high school. I didn't really do too much coding. Um, actually, that time frame was like, early middle school for me. But after that, there wasn't really very much coding until I went to college. And I wanted to study math in college and you had to learn or take some computer science classes as well. So that's when I started coding again. And I learned Java and I learned Python and I ended up minoring in computer science. And I took several classes that were focused on object oriented programming, com creating computer software was basically what I was learning to do. And I really enjoyed writing a whole bunch of code. And then um, creating, well, seeing, running it through the computer and having the computer do something based on all of that code. I thought that was really cool. So when I got to play a number game with the computer or make the computer play Sudoku with somebody, like that was super fun. And that was another kind of big intro and experience that I had in terms of coding was this structured object oriented approach and creating classes and functions and software. And then I learned R during, um, I think probably graduate school, but I might've done a little bit in my undergrad, but it was in my master's program when I was taking statistics classes, we used R to make basic statistical computations and do some data analysis. And so that was more coding and my first intro into R. On the job, after I graduated with my master's and I was an operations research engineer, I learned SQL because I had to work with databases and I actually had to build some databases, very small ones, um, but I learned SQL to do that or SQL. And then I also, oh, I forgot, back in grad school, I was using MATLAB as well for research. Um, but I also learned um, more R on the job as well. After that first job, my second full-time job was as a statistician. And there I learned R and used R Studio, and I really learned how to do data science in R. And it was kind of during that time that I got really into R, but it was actually only within the last few years that I picked it up again, and I really got into data visualization with R. So then I really expanded on my ability to do things in ggplot and create custom graphs in R. 
So that's kind of how I started um, with Britney Spears, Neopets, and a blue computer. And now I am doing a lot of stuff in R. I work in R almost every day, um, and I really enjoy it. And I really like the customization that I can do and creating a bunch of code to analyze my data, to manipulate my data, and then to make my visualization all in one place. Um, and that's how I started coding. So thinking back over my coding journey, there's a couple things that come to mind for me. One is that I like, I learn best and I um, really enjoy learning more when I have an application in mind. So I don't do very well learning, um, you know, theory or just like how something works in principle. I need to have an application. So I have some data and I want to make something, say a radar chart, which I made recently, and I forgot how I need to do that in R. So I look that up and then I practice it because I look up what how I do it and then I code it myself and then I practice it and then that helps to reinforce it. So I learn best and I enjoy learning the most when I have an application in mind. And the second thing that came to mind when I was reflecting back on my coding journey is that I figure out just enough to make something work and then I'm good. So I don't need to know or want to know all the inner workings of a computer. I don't need to know all of the theory and background of how something how some sort of function works. I want to know how to use it and I learned just enough how to, how to use it to move on. And that's not to say that I don't need to understand in some cases why and how things work, especially if I'm doing data science type things or machine learning models, it's really important to understand some of the theory behind them before I just start drawing conclusions based on the results. But particularly when I'm thinking about visualization, I don't need to know how geom underscore point works on a functional level. Like I don't need to know the code behind that function. I do need to know that when I use that, I need an X um, value and a Y value and geom point puts a point at the intersection of that X and Y value. So that's what I mean by kind of learning just enough. I learn enough to apply it and to be able to accurately um, apply it and understand enough but I don't need to go in and understand all of the deep inner workings of something. So those are two things that for me, I've learned as I've kind of reflect about myself and how I've learned as I've reflected back on my data viz, or sorry, not data viz, we're talking about coding, my coding journey. Um, so, but I do want to relate this to data viz and what can you take away from this about data visualization? Well, when you're making data visualizations, it's important to stop and pause and reflect on what you're doing and your process as you're going along. So as you're making a data visualization, pause and reflect and think about what you've done so far, why you've made the design choices that you've made, and think about how your audience is going to connect with your visualization and if you are accurately conveying your message. So this idea of reflection, pausing, thinking about the process applies kind of over all of life and we learn things from that, but it also applies with data viz and how you can pause this in your process, think about your audience, make sure you're on the right track. And as always, only we only need to go step by step. We don't need to figure everything out at once. This applies to coding and applies to data viz. You don't have to figure it all out at once. You can just figure it out one step at a time and, and that's how we make progress, one little step at a time. And as we do things, we learn things and we repeat them and practice them, we get better and we learn more. And then we kind of expand our knowledge base. And then, you know, things that seemed hard are no longer so hard anymore. So that's just all I wanted to share for now. It's a little bit of reflection on my coding journey. And I just think it's fun that it starts with Britney Spears, Neopets and a blue computer. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. Let me know in the comments below, what's your coding journey or maybe your data viz journey? Do you have any ties to Neopets or Britney Spears? Um, I hope you do. Um, so let me know and I'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe. Take care.